we have three logarithm properties that we're going to look at which will help us to expand and evaluate some logarithms. The first one we have is the log of a product is equal to the sum of the logs and you're keeping the same base on those. So log of the product is sum of the separate logs. Here we have a problem log base 2 of 4 times 2. So we can break this apart into log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of 2. And we have a couple of other properties here that can help us clean this up. First of all, we can write 4 as this same base to a power. So we have log base 2 of 2 squared, which will simplify when your bases are the same here, the answer is just the exponent. So this one simplifies just to 2. This one, when you take the log of the same thing, it's equal to 1. And so this answer gives us 3. Next, we have log base 2 of 8x. So the log of a product is equal to the sum of the logs. So log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of x. And then we'll see if we can clean anything up. We will try to rewrite this 8 in terms of 2 to some power, whatever this base is. You want to use that. And so 8 is 2 to the third, so we can rewrite this as log base 2 of 2 to the third, and we are able to simplify that. The answer is just 3, because these are the same. On the second one, there is nothing we can do. There is no way that we can rewrite x in terms of 2, so we have to just keep it as log base 2 of x. So this is our expanded answer. Our next problem, log base 8 of 13x. So it is the log of a product. We can expand it. So the log base 8 of 13 plus the log base 8 of x there is nothing else we can do to simplify. We cannot write 13 in terms of 8 to a power. We cannot write x in terms of 8 to a power. So this is our answer. For this next problem, log base 5 of x, y, z, we have a product of three pieces. So we are going to need three separate terms when we break it apart. So we will have the log base 5 of x plus the log base 5 of y plus the log base 5 of z. And there's nothing else that you could do to simplify any of those. Next we have the natural log of 5e. This will follow the same rule, the log, because it's log base e of a product. So we can break it apart to the sum of the logs. So it will be the natural log of 5 plus the natural log of e. You can simplify a little bit here. The natural log of e, because this is... Uh, base e of e is 1. So that piece simplifies. The other piece does not. So natural log of 5 plus 1 is our answer. Our next property to help us simplify is if we have the log of a quotient 
it is equal to the difference of the logs. So you're going to take the log with the same base, your numerator minus the log of the denominator. For our next problem, we have log base 3 of 27 divided by 9. And you could simplify this, but we'll go ahead and look at it as the log of a quotient. So, will be log base 3 of 27 minus log base 3 of 9. We would try to rewrite, uh, so 27, if we can write it as 3 to a power, it is 3 cubed And so this will simplify. Our base is the same here. And so the answer is the exponent. So this one is equal to 3. This expression we can also simplify. We can rewrite 9 as 3 squared. And here we have the same base. So the answer will be the exponent. So we will have 3 minus 2 equals 1. The other way we could have simplified this one, since 9 would go into 27, 3 times we have the log base 3 of 3 if we just reduced, which is equal to 1. Next we have the log base 4 of 64 over y. So the log of a quotient, we will rewrite as the log base 4 of 64 minus the log base 4 of y. We can rewrite 64 as 4 to the third. Notice I'm choosing the same base. And this would simplify to just the exponent, so just the 3. The other one, there is nothing you can do. You cannot rewrite y in terms of 4 to a power. So it's just going to come down. And that's all we can do. Next, we have log base 2 of 16 over x. So it is the log of a quotient. We'll rewrite it as the difference of the logs. So log base 2 of 16 minus log base 2 of x. You are able to rewrite 16 as 2 to the fourth. So we're using the same base. And then we can simplify. The answer is going to be the exponent of 4. Nothing you can do to the other piece. For this problem, we have a combination of things going on. We have the log base 3 of a quotient, x over yz. And inside this denominator is a product. Uh, basically, when you have this situation, you will have as many separate terms as you have pieces here. So we're going to have three separate logs when we rewrite it. If it's on the numerator, it's going to be plus. If it's on the denominator, it will be minus in front of it. So when we rewrite this, it is log base 3 of x minus log base 3 of y minus log base 3 of z. For our last one of this type, we have the natural log. It will follow the same rules as the other logs. And so it will be the natural log of e minus the natural log of x. The ln of e, remember, is 1. 
minus ln of x. We have one more property to help us simplify logs. And this is if we take the log of any base of something to a power, this exponent comes down and multiplies in front. So it's the exponent times the log. So for our first problem using this property, we have the log base 2 of x squared. This exponent will come down. So this will give us 2 times the log base 2 of x. And there's nothing else you can do to that. For this problem, we have log base b of y to the fifth. So our 5 is going to come down to give us 5 times the log base b of y. This problem will have a combination of things to do. We have the log base b of a product, and then we will have a power. So first let's deal with the product, which is going to give us two pieces, so the sum of the logs. So the log base b of x squared plus the log base b of y. And then we will need to take the exponent down. So we'll take the 2 down. And we'll have 2 log base b of x plus log base b of y. This problem is also a combination. Uh, we have three pieces here. Uh, so we're going to have three separate log terms. And uh, these on the numerator will get plus. So we're doing a log of a product. So log base 5 of x squared plus log base 5 of y cubed. This one is on the denominator, so it will be minus log base 5 of 5. And then we'll use our power property. So we're going to take these exponents down. And also we can clean up on our last term, the log base 5 of 5 will give us 1. When you take the same base of the log as what you're taking the log of will give you 1. So let's clean those up. We'll take this power down. So we have 2 log base 5 of x plus 3 log base 5 of y minus 1. For this next problem, there are two different ways which you can think of it. Um, we could use our power property here. This is the log base 10. It's a common log of n to the negative 6. So one approach is to, to use your power rule and take this exponent down, which would give us negative 6 log of n. The other way to think of it is remember if something has a negative exponent that you can move it to the denominator. So we could think of this as log of 1 over n to the positive 6, which this would give us log of a quotient, which would be a difference. So the log base 10 of 1 minus the log of n to the 6th. The log of 1 is 0. And we could take our 6 down. So it would be minus 6 log n. And we have the same answer. Your 0 doesn't matter. So minus 6 log n. So it doesn't matter which way you were thinking of it. Next, we just have a reminder 
of our rational exponent notation. And we want to be able to go back and forth. So a radical or a square root in this case is the same as x to the 1 half power. If you don't show an index here, it's automatically a 2. And the index is on the denominator of your fraction. So for a cube root, remember it could be written as x to the 1 third power. So our index would be the denominator. So if we wanted to expand this problem, the natural log of the seventh root of x, we could rewrite it as the natural log of x to the 1 seventh and then use our power rule so that 1 seventh is going to come down. So we'll have 1 seventh times the ln of x. So for this problem, let's first use our quotient rule. And so we're going to have two pieces, a log base 6 of 36 minus log base 6 of the square root of x plus 1. Right. On our first term, we can rewrite 36 as a power of 6, so 6 squared. And here you could either use your property when these bases are the same, the answer is the exponent, or you can take the 2 down and it would be 2 times 1. So it is going to give us a 2 for the answer, either way you think of it. For this one, let's rewrite this uh, to the 1 half power. We'll use parentheses because it's all under the radical. And then we could use our power rule and take the half down. Times log base 6 of x plus 1. We'll look at one more problem. I think for this problem I would rewrite this radical. And so I would write it as log base b of x over y to the one-third. And then I would take the third down. Third times log base b of x over y. And then I would simplify the log of the quotient. Um, my third is times that, so I would use a bracket, I think. Uh, so I have log base b of x minus log base b of y. And you could distribute it if you wanted. I would probably leave it there.